This week on Rockstar Superhero. Amorphous is a legendary Finnish metal act and one I've dreamt about hosting for a really long time. When a business contact of mine told me it was possible to snag a chat with the band, well, I pretty much went bonkers. Then I went more bonkers when I found out the only times available were when I already had a week's bookings in place. There was no way I could make it happen. Now I cannot exaggerate the level of bummed out I felt at that moment, but last week I got another call letting me know that I could interview Ollie. It would have to be super early, so I did my best Brian Gumble impression, got up at 4 a.m. and made it happen. I mean, this is Morphous, people. We do what we have to do. Since we had very little time to chat, let's get right into the thick of it. This is my interview with Ollie Pekka Lane, the base god of Amorphous on Rockstar Superhero. Thanks for the time to chat today. Uh, this is really, really exciting for me. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm stoked to not only connect with your band, Amorphous, but especially you, actually. Um, I'm a drummer, and All right. I, yeah, I feel deeply connected to the way you play the bass. Um, it's something I notice in the songs, and I'm very attracted to the, the tones you've created, and I just wanted to let you know how impactful you and music is. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I think uh, we have formed like a pretty solid uh, rhythm theme with uh, Jan over yeah. the years. And uh, yeah. even through I was away for a while, it was like immediately we felt the connection again because uh, after all, we uh, learned how to play together. We were like 17 year old kids when we started to play. And uh, uh, of course, naturally, we learned from each other. And uh, yeah, that's just how it goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were away for quite a while, but I'm certainly glad you're back. We don't need to worry about the politics of that. I'm just, I'm just grateful you're here, buddy. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It's good to be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's just get right to the new record. I know we don't have a lot of time, so look, Halo. It, it comes out tomorrow, I believe. And yeah, yeah, that's that's a fact. Yeah, yeah. So for listeners of my show, by the time you're hearing this, you know, chances are the record is out and you must buy it. I've heard it. It's a done deal. It's a fantastic experience from top to bottom. So again, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. It's like, um, I'm really happy about it as, as well. It's like a um, really well uh, structured whole and entity, I think. Uh, yeah. It's like... Um, we have to thank, of course, Jens about it because uh, he's a producer and uh, he made the song, sele song selections and uh, naturally we have pretty decent songwriters in the band as well. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good combination. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it is fantastic. Uh, you know, I I really dig it. Um, I, I mean, especially, I have to say this, I, I, I love, love track 10, The Wolf. Um, there's something about that too, and then I get it. I mean, it's way deep in the album, and usually, you know, if you're going to put your hits out there, so to speak, it's usually the first, second, or third song on the record. But I really like the placement of this. I think the record just kind of builds and builds, and when you get to this track again, it's track ten. It's there's something about it that just feels and sounds a little different to me than the rest of. The um, but it's progressive and I don't know, it's just a killer track for the bass. You know, the, the, the mm -hmm. vocals are, the vocals are traditional in what you do, you know, the harsh and the melodic. Um, but there's a bridge, you know, a solo section that is just really gorgeous. And, um, I don't know what kind of story you're trying to tell with it, but it's 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 i just i just love it so it, can you can you maybe tell a story about that album uh, excuse me that that track or or do you believe that track best represents the band oh it's kind of hard to say um 
I, I don't know. If, first of all, I'm not exactly sure will we um, play that live that song. Maybe okay. I hope so because it's it's really really pre- representing the album pretty well. Yeah. But still, there are several other songs which are doing the same thing. Uh, say like um, the opener of th- of the album and uh, uh, the moon, of course. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, as you said, it's it has darker mood in a yeah. way, and yeah. still it's kind of uh, this entire album is on the darker side side of Amorphis. I think if you compare yeah. it to uh, Queen of Time, so it must be one oh, of the yeah. heavier tracks of the album. So uh, <laughs> yeah, but still there is like um, my name is Night is coming after that, so it's uh, uh, like a little bit lighter end for the album. Yeah, in that yeah. sense, but yeah, yeah I, I, it's hard for me to say because um, um, it's up to composer, of course, and uh, we didn't spend too much time arranging the songs together uh, in the studio or in the rehearsing place. We just rehearsed the songs and uh, and uh, jumped to the studio. Yeah, but still, I think uh, you could sense at that point already that there is like pretty strict contrasts on the album uh, and mm. between songs. Like uh, there are lots of proggy parts and uh, death metal parts, even, and uh, also bunch of melodies, yeah. which has yeah. been kind of a trademark for Amorphis uh, throughout the years. But yeah. uh, on this album, maybe it's like even more present than on Queen of Time. Mm. Um, there were different kind of values with the Queen of Time. It's a little bit like uh, maybe easier album uh, in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, easier to get into and this mm-hmm. is this might be a little bit harder but uh, still rewarding in a way because you can listen to it several times and find yeah. new things uh, f- from the album. And it's also, of course, it's a pretty long album, and uh, so there is plenty of stuff yeah, to get, in, yeah. get into. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have any more profound stuff to say <laughs> about that exact song, but uh, you, you're ac- actually like you're exactly correct about it that it rep- re- represents the album pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, again, I, I, you know, I love what you're saying because you are saying everything that I feel about the record. Um, I love how melodic it is. Um, but what's great about it is it seems to be a standout. And, and, and the reason I say this is because, as you'd mentioned the previous album, it's, it's quite common for bands to slow down and get lazy after a bit of time. And, and here the band is, I believe this is your 14th album and you're going harder and darker than ever. You know what I mean? So what, what do you attribute this sort of musical dedication to? Why, why are you, why are you working harder, if that makes sense? Uh, you know what I mean? You're doing so much more now as a band. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think maybe we got a little bit lazy uh, in the end of the <laughs> 90s, and uh, we learned a lesson from that in a way. Hmm. And uh, we kind of lost some opportunities there, and... Uh, now we feel that we don't need to do that anymore, and it's uh, up to us if we if we'd like to prevent that <laughs> yeah. uh, thing to happen. You know, uh, uh, of course, uh, producers uh, has something to do about it. Mm-hmm. The guys did uh, Circle album with Peter Tanktrain uh, mm. for albums back, and uh, then uh, they started to work with uh, Jens, and Jens also. Uh, was a little bit like a kick in the ass uh, for the band because uh, he demanded uh, the songs to be a little bit faster for mm. for starters, and also, um, mm, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, he he like uh, uh, created chaos in order to mm. uh, rebuild the whole thing. Uh, what it came to. Uh, Songwriting, yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, like it's like it's for for songwriter it's obvious thing to do your song and uh, like you, you you've always done it like uh, it, during throughout the past 30 years but uh, right but Jens for example he broke down the structures of the songs and uh, switched the parts between the songs mm-hmm. not all the time but some some of the time mm-hmm. and uh, uh, yeah I think that has something to do about it and uh, we are also uh, learned some something about it and uh, it affected to amorphous uh, songwriting uh, mm. uh, generally like uh, no I don't know maybe this time yes didn't have, have that much to say about songs anymore <laughs> because we've we've like uh, done our ho- homeworks and we sort of try to please him <laughs> when mm-hmm. we are uh, and we write, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take it seriously. It's, it's, but, but it's, there's some point in that, mm. still. So, uh, yeah, um, I don't know how would it be if we'd like produce the next album by ourselves. Who knows? Yeah. How would it be? I don't know. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that um, Amorphous' uh, style has changed for good. Uh, yeah on behalf of Jens, Jens's work. Yeah. I yeah. That. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm just super attracted to it. I think it's just, again, it's, it's very well written, very well produced, very well performed. Um, do the, when the songs, when the songs come to you, I mean, as a bass player, are they are they fully formed? I mean, are your parts written, or or um, are you allowed to you know bring your own you know mm-hmm. talent and juice to the table? Yeah, well, um, most of the time I'm doing whatever I like, but there yeah. are some some uh, certain parts where, for example, Esa wishes that there should be this kind of bass thing, mm-hmm. and of course it's going to be there, uh, but and. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we res- respect each other enough to give freedom as well to do what we like. Mm. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't go- call it like a, a band in a way if, mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. tell everyone how to play. Of course, right. uh, of course, they're sending, uh, we're sending like uh, demos to each other. And uh, mm-hmm. there are some kind of... Uh, rough basis in, in in every one of them but uh yeah I'm, i especially this time i took a little bit more freedom for the bass lines uh comparing to queen of time for example because uh um yeah for example uh, first of all Jens wasn't there so uh, i had my own bass producer which was a young guy uh Wow. Who didn't have authority for me to tell me what to do? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and of course I we had a little bit more time to uh, uh, like compose our own stuff. Like I, I had more time to come up with bass bass lines and uh, rehearse for the album this yeah. time due to yeah. the uh, pandemic and uh, the situation. Uh, generally, that the Jens couldn't be here, and uh, the studio session took a little bit more time. Mm, uh, mm, mm, uh, mm. Queen of Time was really hectic session. It was like one or two months, and that was it. Wow! But this that this time we did we did have a little bit more time to prepare ourselves and uh, rehearse and uh, yeah, do mm, stuff. Mm. Yeah. I'm curious. Did the given given the prolific nature of the band, the fact that you, I mean, sure you've been together a long time, but I still, I mean, you look at 14 albums. That's a lot. Um, and you mentioned Queen of Time being difficult because of the the compression of time to put it together. But you also went through, you know, a pandemic putting together Halo. Yeah. So. So, so all things being said, uh, you don't necessarily have to say this is the most difficult record, but I imagine the obstacle of what's going on in the world contributed to 
its overall sound and its feel. And so I'm, I'm wondering, what does Halo, when you look at it now, when you're standing back and you're getting ready to go out on tour, what does Halo mean to you as an album? Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably more of a band album comparing to Queen of Time because uh, mm -hmm. we uh, played the songs together uh, in one room uh, for the starters in the studio and uh, there we started to build the whole al album and uh, every, every one of us uh, basically worked on our own apart from maybe Esa and uh, Tommy Yorts and the vocalist but, uh, but still um, there might be a little bit more looseness on the playing uh, and uh, and what it comes to pandemic and uh, the studio session itself it was like it like uh naturally there was lots of uncertainty during the uh during the whole uh process uh mm -hmm. first of all we wanted to virtually have a connection to jens from our uh, rehearsing place and uh arrange the songs together with him like that but that didn't work out so we had to do it on, on our own again so mm -hmm. uh, uh yeah yeah it's like uh i don't know uh it had its pros and cons because uh now we could work in helsinki only where we live and uh we didn't need to go to sweden uh and spend like uh, two three weeks there mm. and wait for our turn to play now we just could go to the studio and do our things and that that's about it so uh it was quite kind of easy uh, mm. session in that sense so um, yeah I don't know um, yeah mm. it's a little bit little, little bit different it had, has its good and bad sides of uh, uh, working with uh, with the producer in the studio because um, then you get done with it a lot quicker uh, the whole mm -hmm. process I mean. but when like this when you work on your own you can do your own thing a lot mm -hmm. quicker, but the whole process will take a lot more time because uh, uh, it's going to different like uh, structures. You know, uh, the vocals were done in uh, maybe uh, May and June, and uh, guitars, uh, Tommy's guitars in February, and Sander did his thing like uh, maybe uh, throughout the whole process. So. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting session for sure. But I know that mm -hmm. Jens didn't like it that much because he had like a brand new studio and brand new playing room and tracking room. And uh, wow. he would have been uh, sort of keen to use that. Use that, yeah, yeah. And we would also, it would have been like a pleasure to be there. And uh, yeah, probably that be the. Probably oh, yeah. we would yeah. be the first band to go there, but but still, uh, it was a pleasure to work in, at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> to but put it short. That, yeah, is that, but is that why you go to Sweden? Does he live in Sweden? Yeah, he lives in Örebro in, uh, oh. in Sweden, and um, it's about, I don't know, maybe a couple hours from Stockholm to some direction. I don't know where. Sure. But anyway, sure. Um, somewhere at the countryside and... Um, he has his house there and he built uh, his studio just next to the house. And uh, wow. yeah, that's how it goes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for breaking that down. That's a that's way cooler and way different than I expected. I I just had this feeling you were going to be doing it, uh, you know, exchanging tracks over the internet, and uh, you know, it was all going to be done in your living room, like a lot of a lot yeah. of albums are done yeah. nowadays. You know, it's like, yeah, like Billy Elliot or Isaac, whatever. Yeah. So. I don't know. We are not up to that stuff. No, yeah. it's, it's possible, though. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is possible. But you know what? Um, I think a lot of it is generation stuff. I mean, I'm older than you, but we are in the same generation, and we do things the old-fashioned way. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. what we do, and uh, that's the reason we want to put out like traditional full-length uh, long play albums. Yeah, yeah, and not just one songs like. Uh, in every six months or so. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of old-fashioned, but uh, I sort of like 
to keep the uh, vinyl album cover on my hands yeah. and uh, learn yeah. the lyrics from there. And uh, yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly why vinyl's back, too, because everybody knows that that's the best way to do things. Yeah. <laughs> it just is. It just Sounds is. better. Yeah. Feels better. <laughs> Looks yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Looks better. Being able to see the liner notes and the lyrics and to be able to understand where something was put together. And usually there's a little story in there that, you know, you might find out it was dedicated because of a certain reason or, you know, inspired by certain mm -hmm. events in a life. And that's always fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, uh, well, when it comes to working virtually in the studio or at home, I uh, just uh, happen to know uh, from my own, own experience that it doesn't work very well because uh, I've done one like hardcore uh, C cassette with my right. other band right. uh, while, while du during the pandemic and we did them like playing from uh, at our homes and uh, it just didn't feel right and you can sort of hear it from uh, from the result that uh, it's not it lacks some kind of feeling yeah in a way yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but maybe, maybe i just uh, imagine it i don't know it's hard to say maybe some some like uh, if someone would look at it ob objectively would say something totally different but uh, that's how i feel mm. yeah no that's that that makes perfect sense um you know, Oli, uh, one of the things I like about doing these interviews and, you know, having my podcast is, is, is talking to musicians like you who have made their mark in the world. And, you know, you've had a, a long and storied career, you know, um, it's amazing actually what you've accomplished just yourself, let alone being a part of Amorphous. And I'm curious, what, what do you think about your career? Because... I mean, I look at you and I say, man, one, you get to do this. <laughs> Two, I know you have to inspire others. And three, I know your music has changed people's lives for the better. What does that, what does that feel like? Um, it feels good to hear uh, something that you said, but uh, I sort of uh, don't see my... Uh, my history in a band as a career uh, mm -hmm. in any way. I just enjoy playing music and that's what I do. And uh, I'm really fortunate to uh, be surrounded by people who uh, uh, share like same kind of uh, musical taste and uh, values with my with myself. So, uh, yeah. and uh, being able to uh, play with with audiences <laughs> like everywhere mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. it's it's like amazing thing and. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, it's like a, someone someone else could easily be on my position uh, for sure. So therefore, I am fortunate to be here, and uh, I'm fortunate that uh, we met each other uh, in the early '90s. And uh, yeah, and but I, I'm not like paying attention to or thinking about the career thing that much, and or what kind of impact I'm giving to people. It's like a, because. First of all, we need to please ourselves in order to mm -hmm. uh, create the music we like and mm -hmm. hope that someone else would dig it as well. So, uh, But of course, it's heartwarming to hear such things you just told. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my perspective is, I don't know if it's everybody's perspective, but, you know, I was a, you know, I'm a drummer and I was a former session player and I... I envy, and I don't mean that in a you know negative way, but I definitely envy the experience of others who have been able to, you know, again, I know you don't like to use the word career, but to make a you know a lifestyle out of it, mm. to get out yeah, yeah. and to play and to tour, and um, so I mean I'm happy for you. You're a very nice guy, and you know you're part of a a fantastic musical unit. So kudos to you. You know. Okay. You know? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. yeah. But I have to add that probably it seems more glorious 
<laughs> than it is actually is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know I know we're very tight on your we're at we're at your deadline time here, but I, I want to ask a quick question. First of all, I know that the band is going out um, in April um, with yep. uh, Sylvain and Hoaxed um, here in the states, and you're coming to Seattle, so I'll I'll be there, which I'm very excited about because I've never seen Amorphous live. Still um, Arizona, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you know, you get you get asked a lot of questions when you're on a promo tour, um, you know, lining up to go out on on a on a you know a regular tour like you're getting ready to do in the new album release. Um, if I could ask, just what advice, you know, the advice question, but what advice can you give upcoming bands or musicians who would like uh, to have a similar career as yours? You know, what's the what's the requirement to be um, in a position of being seen or heard as a successful musician? Is there such a thing? Well, uh, I can only speak for my own experience and uh, how we started it. And uh, it was like creating music that we loved uh, and not giving a fuck about commercial stuff and uh, yeah, any, anything like that, not th that side of the business or even to think about the business. We just yeah. st started to play the music we loved and uh, never gave up doing it. And uh, uh, yeah, there were lots of people telling us what to do at some point, but uh, we ignored them uh, uh, and still do. So uh, that's my advice. I don't know. Just do what you want to do from the heart and uh, and uh, play the, the kind of music you like. That's yeah. that's the, that's a good start and uh, learn how to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, woodshedding, getting getting to a yeah. place where you learn yeah, it takes it, it takes time. It's like uh, I think any anyone can do it, but uh, it's like uh, you have just have to do it and. Uh, play and play and play like uh, yeah yeah it's awesome man well look thank you so much i i you know i i appreciate you squeezing me in today um it's super super early here but i i i had to get up i had to i had to meet you um i'm so excited and so glad i did so thanks so much ollie and um i can't wait to see you on tour brother thank you very much bro